Today marks National Windrush Day, where the country celebrates the contribution of the Windrush generation and their descendants. Well, in just a few moments, we'll speak to Alison in Brixton, where she's joining local residents in a special performance. But while today is a day of celebration, sadly, there are still many people who have been affected by the Windrush scandal. We're joined now by Michael Braithwaite, who was wrongly accused of being in the UK illegally in 2016. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Good morning. Why, why was it, Michael, so hard for you to prove your citizenship? Uh, the amount of information that was uh, needed, I had, to, I had to find a chronological order of my uh, stay in the country from when I first landed to the present time. Um, this was something that was quite, you know, I, there's no way I could have, have done that. But I was a sort of person that collected documentation, and I had documentation from 73. Wow. You know, I collect all my family's documentation, birth certificates, what have you, my parents, everything, you know. And uh, for me, that was something I, I, I thought about and thought, well, why should I have to be, you know, finding things that I cannot find? It's yeah. impossible. The, the, it's impossible. The story, I mean... It beggars belief, Michael, that you're, you, you arrived in 1961 from Barbados, your father had fought with Britain in the Second World War, you settled over here, um, you, uh, well, your job, I mean, t tell us what your job was. My job was a teaching assistant working with children with uh, complex needs and moderate needs. Well, I mean, this is and, an, uh, an, es an essential job, um, serving those children, mm. being part, being part of, of the country, which is pretty much all you knew. So when you're, when you're told that, after all of your contribution, you may have to go back, what happens to your head? I was in a void. I felt like a, a, a criminal. I felt, you know... My self-worth had gone. My, my path in life has been totally ruined. My state of mind was... I became very silent. I wouldn't even talk to my family or my, you know, or my people because I thought it was my fault. Really, you think it's your fault because for someone to actually tell you you have no worth, you don't belong here, you know, you need to go back to your own country. But this is my country. I came at that young age. Uh, and in the Caribbean, we lived a British life. Everything was British. We lived uh, every, every celebration. We celebrated the Queen. We, we honoured the, the, the status of being part of the British Empire. You know, uh, my grandparents, my granddad on both sides, we, you know, we went to church. Church was the, the biggest thing in our life. Mm -hmm. And it was part of our structure that we celebrated the Queen and the mon under the monarchy as it is as part of our heritage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for someone to actually put something in your life, especially at my time and age, it was like, you might as well, you know, take away my soul, because they did. Yeah. Mm. I was taught this thought. Michael, if you hang on there for a minute, because um, obviously today um, there are these commemorations to celebrate the Windrush generation for everything they've contributed to the UK. Um, Alison is in Brixton. Uh, there's a special performance at exactly 10.27, I think. So let's pop over to her now, just before it. Morning, Alison. Good morning, Philip and Davina. Yes, we are celebrating all things Windrush generation. We're honouring those people who on this very day came to Britain in 1948. And Sonia is joining me, who's come up with this amazing idea. What are we singing today on this street and what's it called? Well, we're going to sing, uh, we, you can get it if you really want, by Desmond Decker. Can I just put in that Desmond Decker is local, he's buried in our local... Uh, Stratton Hill Cemetery. We wanted a song that resonates with people to think about Black Lives Matter. The Windrush generation arrived in 1948. They faced hostility, racism, they survived, and that's why we're here. We're celebrating that survival. We want to say thank you to them and we want to continue to support them. And we're celebrating all over the country, but on this street, we're celebrating through the unity of song. It is that time. It is 10.27 now, which, which honours the people, oh, 1,027 people who came across to England. Should we do this, Sonia? Yes, let's go OK, for this it. is our song on the street. Hopefully all the residents are going to get involved. Three, Six. two, one, let's do this! You can get it if you really want. Yes! You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want. But you must try, try and try, try and try. You'll succeed. 
succeed at last. generation back to you in the studio we're well gonna done, keep Alison. enjoying ourselves well at a done. distance and uh, you know there's something really i don't know there yeah. was something really moving about the words of that song mm. like if you can get it if you really want it if you try try yeah but they've, they've I, waited I know, a but long like, time and they've waited too long right yeah 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 well as we were saying the amount of people who've actually managed to get any of the compensation let's go back to michael who was loving that um <laughs> michael um the uh the fact that and you said, you know, it stripped you as a person. I know that you spent hours and hours just sitting on Hampstead Heath, looking out into nowhere, wondering what the hell was going to happen to your life. If you had been expected to go back, what was over there for you? Did you know anybody? Nothing. All my family members have left or died. I had uh, aunts and uncles who lived there, um, great uncles. You know, they've died off and there's nobody there that I could even relate to, you know? There's, I don't have any friends from that part of the world, you know, that I can I have kept in contact with, you know? And in, the, in that time, have you been able to support yourself financially or has the whole situation made looking after yourself financially a real nightmare? Well, my community, you know, where I worked, I, I worked with a lot of children and had great success. The parents were so happy with me. They, they fundraise. Uh, the school I work with, they, they raise money for me, you know, which, is, which I felt so grateful for because in a time of your mental stress and, you know, you, where do you turn to? Who do you turn to? And I'm a very personal man and I've always, I don't know, kept my West Indian ideology. Be a man, don't cry. You know, go to the next day. You know. You, um, you have got to get all the ducks in a row now as far as the paperwork is concerned. As you say, thankfully, you did keep a lot of paperwork. So many people didn't. And who would? You know, the, the, mm. when I'm looking at... We were talking about this this morning. I was looking back and thinking, how much have I got from earlier on in like my life? six you know, years' of... worth of paperwork. That's it. I chuck everything else away. Yeah. There's you... no way I'd have Things decades. like that. No like, way. proof. Um... The, so we, we're waiting for you to get all your paperwork in order and then will you apply for the compensation? Well, we, we have to apply for a biometric card first yeah. before I went any, any further, just to see if I can get my job back in that, in that particular time. Um, when, I, when I applied to the Home Office for the biometric card, I was told uh, they needed information from 73 Burma to the time I landed in this country. And that, that was impossible. Um, they, they came to a point where my students were getting really... And my union, because they were, their hands were tied, my headmaster was distraught because he knew my worth, but he, he was uh, told that if he hired an illegal, he'd be charged with £2,000 or £20,000 and 10 years in prison. Yeah. I met, we it must met be... Case, I just... The, the idea of you being called an illegal or somebody calling you an illegal, how did that make you feel? You know... Uh, Davina, I had nightmares. I would wake up, the doorbell would ring, I'd be down at the front door, opening my front door, thinking I was going to be taken away. And I was informed that they turn up at six o'clock in the morning. I was always dressed and ready. I was always dressed and ready, waiting for that moment to come. For how you know? long? How many, for how long did you get up, uh, get dressed and wait at six in case you were taken away? For about 18 months. Uh, sleepless nights. I, I think I had napped. I didn't sleep. It wasn't a sleep, you know, and I, I became... I, had, I don't suffer with anxiety, but at some point I became very rational with my life and thinking, this is my fault. It can't be anybody else. How could they... How could someone put me in this position? It's a, it's a shameful Shame. scandal, Michael, um, and, uh, and I hope... I mean, there's nothing gives you back those 18 months' worth of 
horror, but um, but I uh, I hope it's resolved for you and for everybody else. Um, who's in the photo behind you? That's me. I'm, I'm bigging up myself. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you big up yourself. And it's lovely talking to you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.